J.L. Griffin. We invite you to worship with us this morning. You know, times are different, so we're doing things different, but we know that God is still on the throne. So we're going to bring the word to you, bring our songs to you, and hope that the Lord reaches you through our telecast. And Lord, we thank you for everything you have done for us. We thank you for your many full blessings. We thank you for these trying times. We know that you are still God, and you are on the throne. And everything is in your hands. So Lord, give us the faith. Give us the understanding. And give us the love right now to love one another. And to be with you have called us to be. Help us to shower your love upon the world. Help us to know that love overcomes fear. Watch over us and guide us in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we will have our scripture reading from Missionary Real Way. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for my name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word. I have read you Psalms 23 in his time. Thank you, Lord.
are, I'm here to help celebrate our pastor, Superintendent Reverend J.L. Griffin. Many of you may know and some of you may not know that on Wednesday, November 18th, will be his birthday. And we're so happy and honored that God has allowed him to see another year. So if you would like to help us celebrate him, you can bring a card or whatever you would like, balloons, a cake, <laughs> uh, to him on Sunday between 12 and 1230. Uh, Deacon March will be here to collect our tithes and offerings. And at that time, if you choose to help us celebrate our pastor, you can do so at that time. Once again, Sunday, between 12 and 12.30, you can come and help celebrate our pastor for his birthday, which is Wednesday, November 18th. Happy birthday, pastor. We love you. Good morning to all of our faithful saints and members that are listening today. And to each of you, our friends and well-wishers that have once again tuned us in on this Sunday, we feel privileged and honored to come once again into your homes, and we greet you in the matchless name of Jesus. I thank God for the prayer today and for the praise team, for the song that was sung just before I was introduced, We Need Thee. Oh Lord, we need thee. I think one of the main problems with people today is that we fail to acknowledge when we need help. We've been brought up and we've been taught to believe that we should be independent and that we can handle just about anything that comes our way. But I'm sure that the world today has come to the conclusion now that we have a situation that we need help. People are looking in different directions, but I still believe that it is incumbent upon the people of God to look to the Lord, call upon the Lord in the time of troubles. And so I believe the song is fitting for all of us today, believers, non-believers, that we need thee. Oh Lord, we need thee every hour. We pray today, Lord, that you would bless us that you would heal our land. Eternal God, we thank you once again for the opportunity to be able to speak a word of hope to these, your people. I pray now that you might anoint me, for my speaking today is in vain, except you anoint the words that fall from my lips. Open the hearts of these that will hear and help them to be receptive and be encouraged today after this word to say, I believe that God is going to do something for me. I pray and ask it in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. I invite your attention today for just a few minutes to the book of St. Luke, chapter 23, verses 42 and 43. It resists us, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. I'd like to talk to you for the next few minutes from this subject, why Jesus did what he did. Why Jesus did what he did. In the text, we find that a request was made, and I believe that it was an outlandish request. A request was being made, and the only thing that was more ridiculous than the outlandish request is that the, the uh, request was granted. Sometimes we don't receive because we don't request. And sometimes when we request, we request too small. But in our text today, we are introduced to a man who was known in biblical times as a male factor. In our times, he would be known, Sister Astina, as a criminal. He'd been convicted by the Roman authorities as a lawbreaker, and he had been sentenced to death or crucifixion on a cross. 
Death by the cross was the highest and the most hideous form of execution in Roman times. It was equivalent to our present day capital punishment. Now there has been much speculation as to what this man's crimes were, but in any case, he was receiving justice for what his lifetime of crimes were. And on this worst day of his life, he found himself hanging next to the Savior of the world. And he has the audacity to make an absurd request. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know today, listening to me, I don't care what your situation is. I don't care right now what your plight in life might be. You right now are next to the Savior of the world. Yes. And all you have to do is ask. Yes. And Jesus said it shall be given unto you. This male factor, this criminal, who deserved hell, ended up getting heaven. So the question begs to be asked today, what was Jesus trying to teach us? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What was Jesus trying to prove by pardoning this strong-armed criminal? A man who in all probability had never even said grace over his food, let alone done anything to deserve grace. If you will allow me today to share this little story with you, it might just help us understand why Jesus did what he did. The story goes, missionary, that there were a couple of prowlers who broke into a store, a department store in a large city. They stayed in the store just long enough at night to do what they came to do, and then they got out unnoticed. The strange thing was that they took absolutely nothing with them. Instead of stealing anything, they changed the cost of everything. Price tags were swapped in the store. Values were exchanged. They took, for example, the price tag of a $3,000 millimeter camera and stuck that $3,000 price tag on a $5 box of stationery. They took the tag from a $5,000 outboard motor and placed it on a $10 paperback book. For four hours, they went through the store and repriced everything in the store. The next morning, the store opened as usual and functioned as normal for three hours. But after three hours, someone noticed what had happened. For three hours, some people got great markets, while other people got ripped off. For three hours, no one noticed that the values had been swapped. They did not know that the tags had been changed. Well, it's hard to believe, but we see the same thing happening every day in this 21st century. We're living in a day of distorted value systems. The most valuable things in our lives are being peddled away for pennies. And we see the cheapest smut of our lives going and selling for millions of dollars. Every day, people of God, we hear things like, let's not confuse business with ethics. People are selling their integrity for the almighty dollar. Those who have been made ministers of justice, closely excludinated, we find that they are administering injustice. What causes us to elevate our bodies and turn around and degrade our souls? What causes us 
to pamper our skin while we pollute our precious hearts. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about why did Jesus do what he did? I'm persuaded and I submit to you today that our values are messed up. Satan has broken into the store of our souls and exchanged all the price tags. Now, thrills are going for top dollar and our humanity is at an all-time low. Satan has convinced us that the human race is headed nowhere and that we have really no destiny. The belief today is that creation was incidental and that humanity has no direction. And so if a man or a woman has no destiny, then certainly they have no duty and no obligation, no responsibility. If a man has no destiny, then he has no guidelines or he has no goals. If a man has no destiny, then who is to say what is right and what is wrong? Who is to say that a man can't leave his wife and his children? What's wrong with shacking up? We no longer have a value system because the tags have been changed by the devil. It's your value system against mine. We have no absolutes today. No more principles. No more ethics or standards. Life has, has since been reduced to weekends, paychecks, and quick thrills. And the bottom line to all of this is disaster. If a man or woman has no duty or destiny, the next logical step is that a person has no value. And if a person has no future, then they certainly have no worth. If there's no reason to be here, then we have no value. Because Satan has changed our price tags. Our system has gone haywire. We feel today useless and worthless. We find more people today that are just plain freaked out. Because our value system has been changed, we play games. We create false value systems. We say that you are valuable if you're pretty. We say that you're valuable if you can produce. You're valuable if you can slam dunk a basketball. Or you're valuable if you can sink a ball in a hole in one. We say that you're valuable if your name in the front of it has DR for doctor. Or on the end of it, it has PhD. You're valuable to us now if you have a six-figure job and you drive a foreign car. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Value today is now measured by two criteria. Appearance and performance. Now, when you think about that, that's really a tough system. But where does that leave the retiree? Where does that leave the ugly? Where does that system leave the uneducated? Where does it leave the old folks, the aged, and the handicapped? What hope does that offer to an unborn child? We become nameless members on mistagged merchandise. Well, I've got to close, but this is man's value system. This is not God's value system. In God's sight, we are somebody. I heard the psalmist ask the question, what is man that God is so mindful of him? 
He's made him just a little more than angels and crowned him with great glory and honor. In God's sight, we are somebody. Our work as I close the day, we must know is built in. Our value is inborn. Jesus wanted us to know that a person is worth value simply because he or she is a person. Oh, bless God. That's the reason Jesus treated people like he did. That's why Jesus did what he did. Because he saw a value in people. They might have been down in their luck, as we call it. They might not have had prestigious positions in life. But I saw Jesus stopping by the well of Samaria, or the well of Sychar, and talking with a woman of ill repute. I saw that same Jesus sitting down eating dinner with sinners, because he knew your position in life did not really determine your value. I dare say to you today that there are some people that we are passing on the streets every day of our lives that have more value than some of us that sit in church Sunday after Sunday. If anyone was ever worthless as I tried to go, surely it was this speak who hung on the cross. If anyone ever deserved to die, surely he deserved it. If ever there was a loser, I'm sure that his name was at the top of the list. Maybe this male factor, this criminal, maybe, just maybe, he had heard Jesus preach. Maybe he had seen him love those that were lowly and down in life. But then on the other hand, maybe he never heard Jesus preach. Maybe the only thing he knew about Jesus was what he saw before him. A beaten, slashed, nail suspended preacher with torn flesh hanging on a cross. Something, however, told him that he had never been in better company. I just want you to know today if you are listening to me and you are down on our luck in life, you have never been in better company. Jesus is a friend that will stick closer than a brother. This man hanging on the cross something, however, told him that he was in good company. This criminal finally realized that all he had left was a prayer. I want to let you know today, if you've lost your home, if you've lost your car, if you've lost loved ones, if you've lost money, you always have something left. You have prayer. For Jesus said, men always pray. When you're laid off, pray. When you're sick, pray. When you are friendless, pray. This criminal realized that all he had left was a prayer. He had finally found one to whom he should pray. Yeah. Yeah. He looks over at Jesus as I close and says to Jesus in so many words, Sister Tiny, any chance you can put in a good word for me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank God Jesus looked at him in so many words and said to him, Man, consider it done. I want you to know today you don't have to have long, lifted prayers. The man just said, when you come in your kingdom, remember me. As I close, think about it. Today there's a grinning ex-convict walking the streets of gold who probably knows more about grace than a thousand theologians. No one else would have given this man a prayer, but in the end, that's all he had and that's all it took. I'm here to tell you today, if you will cry out to Jesus, there are people
people that will testify if we would give them time and tell the truth. You know, I really didn't know why Jesus did in my life what he did. Why did God keep you from going down the same path someone else went down that led to destruction? Why is it that God took the meager things that you had and sustained you and kept you? in your right mind. Why don't you tell the truth what you've been through? You should be in an institution right now. No wonder that the songwriter said, I don't look like what I've been through. So I invite you today, if you are listening to me, to know that Jesus will do for you what people don't think he'll do. If you ask why, it's because Jesus knows your intrinsic value. Jesus said, all souls are mine. Yeah. Jesus sees value in you, young lady. Yes. Jesus sees value in you beyond your physicalness. Yes. Jesus sees value in you besides where you live. Yes. You can live in a palatial mansion and still not get things done from Jesus. But when he looks at your heart, he does things that we never would understand. So I wanted to share with you today why Jesus did what he did. Yes. He did it because he sees value in each and every one of us. The story was told of a man that was a multi-billionaire. He died unexpectedly. His wife had died a few years before him, and the only thing left before he died was his son. He raised his son until he was about 16 years old, and unexpectedly his son died. It broke his heart, missionary. He didn't want to live any longer. His son, whom he had invested everything in, passed away. The man wrote his will after his son died. When the man died, they put up his estate Billions of dollars. And all of the wealthy people of the community gathered that day at the auction to bid on this and to bid on that. All of the things that they thought were precious, the precious paintings and the musical instruments that were priceless, they were put to the side. But there was one little measly picture. The picture was a picture of the deceased man's son. People looked at the little picture and no one was interested in it. Someone, the, the auctioneer said, what am I bid? What am I bid? What am I bid for this picture? Hundreds of people there. One man put up his hand and he said, I bid $75 for the picture. The auctioneer says, one once going twice sold for $75 to the man in the brown suit. Then he tapped his gavel and said, the auction is ending. People started fussing. What do you mean? What are you talking about? The auction is ending. What about all those valuable things over there? We want to, 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 to bid on those things. The auctioneer said to him, but you did not read the deceased's will. In the will, the father said that whoever gets my son, gets everything. And I'm here to tell you today, you don't have to have all the money in the world, but if you get the son, everything else, peace, joy, happiness, comes when you get the son. Jesus did it because he wanted us to know we were valued. For God so loved the world that he gave his only the God's Son. I pray today, Father, that you might encourage the hearts of those that heard this message today to know that why you did what you did was because you see the value. Help us as people of God to start seeing the value in one another. Help us to be builders and not destroyers. Help us, dear God, to be encouragers. Help us to be life givers. Let our words be strength to the feeble knees. Help us to see in others better things than we see in ourselves. For Jesus looked on the multitude and had compassion. 
my sister, my brother, be blessed today and know that Jesus did it for you simply because you are valuable to him. Again, I would like to thank all of our faithful members that have been supporting us during this time that we don't assemble at church. We thank you for giving on our Giveify app and for those that have been bringing in your tithing and offerings to the church. We also would like to thank our well wishers and supporters that have been contributing to us. We ask you that if this ministry blesses you at all, that you would please make a donation to St. Matthew's Temple Church of God in Christ that we can further this ministry. Until we meet again next Sunday morning at the same time, know that Jesus did it because your worth is more than what it looks on the outside. God bless you.